The Cro-Magnons were a tall hominid of the Upper Paleolithic, known from skeletal remains found primarily in southern France and classified as the same species, Homo sapiens, as modern humans. The Cro-Magnons were robust and powerful, and they are thought to have been of medium height. The body was generally heavy and solid, appeared to have been relatively taller than other early human species, and were anatomically similar to modern Europeans, West Asians and North Africans, but with larger brains, broader faces, more prominent brow ridges, and larger teeth than the current average. Cro-Magnon weapons included spears, spear throwers, harpoons, the bow and arrow, throwing sticks, and Paleolithic dogs. Some of the earliest Cro-Magnon specimens share skeletal characteristics with Neanderthals. Cro-Magnons, unlike Neanderthals, had straight foreheads, similar to modern humans. Their faces were short and wide, with a prominent chin, and their brains were slightly larger than the average person's today, and they had powerful bodies with strong muscles. The skeletons discovered at the Cro-Magnon rock shelter indicate that humans during this time period lived a physically demanding lifestyle. In addition to Cro-Magnon one's injuries, several of the people discovered at the shelter had fused vertebrae in their necks, indicating traumatic injury, and the adult female found they had survived for some time with a skull fracture. Furthermore, the skull of Cro-Magnon I from France exhibits characteristics that are unique to modern humans, such as a tall, rounded skull with a nearly vertical forehead. The eye sockets are no longer topped by a large brow ridge, and the face and jaw have no prominent prognathism. In fact, most Paleolithic humans tended to have prominent brow ridges. Early modern humans, such as those found in Jebel Irhud, Skul and Kafzi, had thick, large brow ridges, but they differed from archaic humans, such as Neanderthals, by having a supraorbital foramen, or notch, which formed a groove through the ridge above each eye, with the exception of Skul II, whose ridge was unbroken, unlike other members of her tribe. Yet our ancestors' brow ridges did not appear to have a mechanical function. They could have served as a social signal, indicating strength and dominance. Back in the 1980s, archaeological cave teams discovered stone tools, providing startling evidence that anatomically modern humans, the ancestors of the Crow Magnons, lived in the Middle East at least 90,000 years ago, more than doubling the age of their direct ancestors. The discovery also ruled out the possibility that Neanderthals, who lived in West Asia and Europe between 300,000 and 40,000 years ago, were part of the direct evolutionary line that led to Homo sapiens. The Neanderthal species is believed to have evolved in Europe after separating from the Homo sapiens lineage around 400,000 years ago, despite comments from others who believe no human species come from Europe. There hasn't been one species that emerged in Europe, that came to life, that sprung to life out of nowhere just in Europe. They all came from Africa. Meanwhile, attention has turned to another set of early Cro-Magnon remains from Kafse Cave, which appeared to be even older, based on associated animal bones. Stone tools discovered in the same strata as animal and human remains were dated to 90,000 years ago, plus or minus 5,000 years. According to the British science journal Nature, a French research team confirmed that stone tools found with modern human skulls in Kafsa Cave in the Mount Carmel area are approximately 92,000 years old, using a technique known as thermoluminescence dating. Based on this chronology, Dr. Chris Stringer of the British Museum argued that Neanderthals should be recognised as a distinct species that evolved alongside modern humans before becoming extinct around 40,000 years ago. In fact, this discovery resulted in Neanderthals being reclassified as a separate species, Homo neanderthalensis, whereas for a time they were classified as Homo sapiens neanderthalensis. With these discoveries, the long-held ancestor-descendant relationship between Neanderthals and modern humans was disproven, as Neanderthals coexisted with early Cro-Magnons in the Middle East for at least 60,000 years. While the early Cro-Magnons had some primitive characteristics, they were undeniably more modern than the Neanderthals. Two other caves near Mount Carmel, Taban Cave and School Cave, had previously produced two distinct sets of human remains. 
the remains from Tyburn Cave resembled those of European Neanderthals, whereas those from School Cave, which are thought to be slightly younger, represented an early form of Cro-Magnon man. At the time of discovery, archaeologists believed that the finds, because they were in the same region, represented a species transitioning from late Neanderthal to early Cro-Magnon, or that Neanderthals and Cro-Magnons were merging to form a single race. Nonetheless, theory was disproved when the early Cro-Magnon remains from School Cave were discovered to be approximately 80,000 years old, 20,000 years older than the Neanderthals from Tyburn Cave. Subsequent discoveries in other caves have revealed that Neanderthals likely began arriving in the region around 50,000 to 60,000 years ago, fleeing the ice sheets that were encroaching on their European homeland at the height of the last ice age. This ancient exodus into the Levant by Neanderthals was significant because they discovered the region already occupied by the Cro-Magnon ancestors of modern humans. While Cro-Magnon remains represent the earliest anatomically modern humans to appear in Western Europe, they were not the first humans to evolve. Our species first evolved approximately 300,000 years ago somewhere in Africa. The discovery points to Africa as the origin of modern humans, just as it appears to have been the source of the first hominids who populated Eurasia a million years ago and were most likely the ancestors of the Neanderthals. The remains of prototype modern humans have been discovered in caves and sediments at Herto and Omokibish in Ethiopia, Jebel Ehud in Morocco, and Florisbad in South Africa. Paleontologists argue that these remains are 300,000 to 150,000 years old, implying that modern humans evolved in Africa. However, the age of the Kafsi cave indicates that modern humans had already split into distinct African and Eurasian populations by 100,000 years ago, and thus must have originated even earlier. While the theory of African origin must be supported by more evidence, the possibility that modern humans originated in Southwest Asia cannot be dismissed. These new findings raise new questions for paleontologists about why Cro-Magnon man took so long to migrate from the Middle East to Europe. The oldest Cro-Magnon remains in Europe are only about 40,000 years old, and the harsh conditions of the Ice Age or the well-established presence of Neanderthals in Europe may have hampered their westerly migration. Nevertheless, the origin of Cro-Magnon's modern physical characteristics appears to be outside of Europe. Evidence from Southwest Asia suggests that modern humans displaced Neanderthals around 40,000 years ago. Before that, the origins of modern humans must be traced back to Africa. In other words, the Herto man from Ethiopia was a far better candidate as a forebear, not just for the Cro-Magnons, but for all of us alive today, not just Europeans, but all of the world's peoples, from the Eskimos of Greenland to the Pygmies of Africa, from Australian Aborigines to Native Americans. In short, the Herto man served as a trailblazer for a new era in human evolution. Since then, many paleontologists, anthropologists and geneticists have agreed that this ancient Ethiopian and all of his kin, both distant and close, could indeed be our ancestors, though it has also become clear that the evolutionary path of these fledgling modern humans was not easy. In fact, skull comparisons provided much of the evidence for the origins of the first modern humans. Over several decades, American physical anthropologist William Howells documented tens of thousands of human skulls in museum collections around the world. Remarkably, Howell's skull measurements revealed distinct correlations between geography and human biology, contributing to our understanding of the world's population history. Howells included a number of fossil human skulls in this comparison to see if they could provide insights into modern human dispersal patterns. Remarkably, one of the patterns that emerged was that many of the earliest European modern human skulls from the last Ice Age, known as Cro-Magnons, were statistically very similar to Aboriginal Australians and Papua New Guineans. Did this reflect a close ancestry between the first Europeans and the first Australians? It is widely accepted today that these multivariate analyses of ancient and modern skulls do not always reveal a strong biological relationship between similarly shaped skulls. 
Instead, it reflects patterns similar to those found in many early modern human fossils, which are larger and more robust than later Holocene populations. But the story is far more complex. One of the earliest and most complete modern human skulls from Europe can be found among the remains of ancient Russians at Kostenki. The remains discovered at Kostenki in southwestern Russia belong to a man who lived between 38,700 and 36,200 years ago. In Howells's original multivariate analysis, the skull was statistically very similar to the first Australians, yet a genetic study demonstrates that Kostenki 14 was already purely European. The ancient skeleton discovered at Kostenki 14 has revealed a significant story about Europe's human history. All modern humans, including Russians and Australians, are descended from an initial migration out of Africa, according to the most prominent theory. The fossil record suggests that this occurred around 100,000 years ago in the Near East, at Skul and Kafse, as we have discussed. Indeed, accurately dated fossils are essential for understanding the course of human evolution. One such fossil is a human skull, discovered more than 50 years ago near Hofmeyer in South Africa's Eastern Cape Province. Recently, an international team of scientists published a study in the magazine Science that dated the Hofmeyer skull to 36,000 years old. Although the skull was discovered over a half century ago, its significance was only recently recognized. According to the researchers, the Hofmeyer skull provides the first insights into the morphology of an ancient sub-Saharan African population, implying the most recent common ancestor of all of us, regardless of origin. Researchers used a novel dating method to determine its age, which was just over 36,000 years, by measuring the amount of radiation absorbed by sand grains that filled the skull's brain case. At this age, the skull fills a significant gap in sub-Saharan Africa's human fossil record, dating from approximately 70,000 to 15,000 years ago. During this critical period, the later Stone Age archaeological tradition, with its sophisticated stone and bone tools and artwork, emerges in sub-Saharan Africa, and anatomically modern people appear for the first time in Europe and Western Asia along with the equally complex Upper Paleolithic archaeological tradition. To determine the affinities of the Hofmeyer fossil, researchers used three-dimensional measurements of the skull, which are used to differentiate recent human populations based on geographic distributions and genetic relationships. Then they compared the Hofmeyer skull to Upper Paleolithic skulls from Europe, as well as skulls of living humans from Eurasia and Sub-Saharan Africa such as the Khoisan, also known as Bushmen. Because the Khoisan are represented in South Africa's recent archaeological record, they were expected to bear a close resemblance to the fossil. Instead, the Hofmeyer skull differs significantly from recent sub-Saharan Africans, including the Khoisan, and shares a close affinity with European upper Paleolithic specimens known as Cro-Magnon, such as Kostenki-14. The field of paleoanthropology is known for its contentious debates, one of which has raged for years about the evolutionary origin of modern humans. According to a number of genetic studies on living people, modern humans evolved in sub-Saharan Africa before moving on to colonize the Old World. Yet other genetic studies, generally on nuclear DNA, argue against this African origin and exodus model. Instead, new studies suggest that archaic non-African groups, such as the Neanderthals, made significant contributions to the genomes of modern humans in Eurasia. Until now, the lack of human fossils of appropriate antiquity from sub-Saharan Africa has meant that these competing genetic models of human evolution could not be tested by paleontological evidence. According to the study, the Hofmeyer skull has changed all that. The surprising similarity between the fossil skull from the southernmost tip of Africa and similarly ancient skulls from Europe is in agreement with the genetics-based out-of-Africa theory, which predicts that humans, like those that inhabited Eurasia in the Upper Paleolithic, should be found in sub-Saharan Africa. The study notes that the skull from South Africa is the first fossil evidence to support this prediction. However, the skull, dating from 36,000 years ago, is younger than Kostenki 14. Therefore, this theory of a sub-Saharan population that migrated to populate Eurasia is now turned on its head.